Today's subject that our church has assigned for us for the study is Kudosh Ito. Kudosh Ito is the anglicized version of two words from the Syriac, Kudosh and Ito. Kudosh means sanctification. Kudosh Ito means sanctification of the church. Now, what does that have to do with this Sunday? The Roman Catholics, Orthodox Christians, and we, Malangara Syrian Martimites, follow the Gregorian calendar. And according to the Gregorian calendar, the Sunday, October 30th or 31st, if that day falls on a Sunday, that is the first Sunday of the year for the liturgical year for the Roman Catholics, Orthodox Christians, and us. If that doesn't happen to be a Sunday, it will be the first Sunday in November. So that's why we are celebrating Kudoshito on this Sunday, which is the first Sunday of our calendar year. What is Gregorian calendar? We'll come to that in a minute. According to our Metropolitan, Joseph Mar Irenius, Kudoshito is sanctification of the Church. That sanctification of the Church is really sanctification of the family. Because without families, there are no churches. And by extension, individuals. Without individuals, there are no families, no churches. Therefore, Kudoshito here is an opportunity for each one of us to sanctify ourselves. So what is the Gregorian calendar? When um, Julius Caesar became emperor of the Roman Empire, he realized that the Roman calendar was very flawed. It did not synchronize with the seasons. So he hired uh, some astronomers to create a new calendar, and the result was the Julian calendar. Julian calendar was instituted in 46 BC. However, the astronomer Sosigenes, who created the calendar, made a small error in the length of the day. It was off by 11 minutes. That resulted in the days falling behind the seasons. So they added an extra day and it stuck it in February, which is the shortest month. That's why they got the EP. That again didn't fix the problem because was a few seconds off that resulted in the seasons drifting from the dates. We know we Christians, our forefathers, were persecuted by the Roman Empire. That stopped with the Emperor Constantine. In AD 313, by the Edict of Milan, it was proclaimed that Christians should be treated with respect and benevolence. Constantine, a few years later, in fact, 12 years later, commissioned the first synod of Nicaea. That's where we got our Vishwasa Pramon. It's called the Nicene Creed. And we recite that every Sunday. Now, another recommendation of the council was that Easter should be celebrated at the same time as the first century Christians. So because the Julian calendar was drifting by days, by year 1000, there was a difference of seven days with the prospect that Easter will again fall off the right season. Therefore, Pope Gregory XIII commissioned some astronomers to change it so that the calendar year will synchronize with the seasons. Unfortunately, the astronomer died, and then Pope Gregory XIII employed another astronomer from Germany. He was a Jesuit priest by name Christopher Clavius. So Christopher Clavius perfected the calendar as we know it now. And because of that, the calendar is known as the Gregorian calendar. Well, in those days, when the Gregorian calendar was instituted, 
it was the month of October, and therefore, in the liturgical year, that is the first of the year. So, that's the story of our celebrating Kudoshito in October or November. As I mentioned, our uh, Metropolitan has told us that this is a celebration of the family and by extension individual. So this is a time for each and every one of us to sanctify ourselves for the Lord. Now let me give you one more little detail. We add one day as leap year every four years, but then there will be a slight error in the length of the year and therefore for every hundred years the leap year is skipped. So every year that's divisible by four is a leap year, but every year that is divisible by four is not a leap year if it's also divisible by 100. Now, you may remember that year 2000 was a leap year. It was divisible, and it is divisible by 100. So what happened? So to correct the error in the length of the day, every 400th year, was supposed to be a leap year again. So that is another little detail. In case any one of you decided to live till the year 2400, it will be divisible by 100, but still will be a leap year. The next uh, leap year will be cancelled in 2100. Again, if somebody wanted to live that long. So now that we have the history out of the way, let us go on to our topic of the day, Kudoshito. And I have selected John chapter 17, verse 17, and then again verses 20, 21, and 22 for today's study. Let me go ahead and read it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. Let us skip over to verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you have. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. John chapter 17 is considered a prayer. This is the prayer that Jesus prays for his disciples before he walks into the Garden of Gethsemane, where he gets finally arrested. He had celebrated the final dinner with them. He has given a long series of instructions to the disciples, and at the end of it, at the end of that farewell speech to the disciples, he prays for them. And it's in that prayer, he prays for the sanctification of the disciples. Sanctify them by the truth, your word is truth. Them meaning the leaven, because Judas Iscariot had already left. So he prays for the leaven who walked to the garden with Jesus for his final moments before he was arrested by the Roman authorities. And he prays, he specifically says, I'm praying not just for them, I'm also praying for all those who are going to be told about me, all the people that would ever come to know Jesus. So there we have Jesus' prayer for the disciples and each and every one of us for our sanctification. For sanctification is derived from the word sanctus. What is sanctification? This is where our church differs a bit from the Roman Catholic tradition where saints are dead people who are canonized by the Pope. However, the New Testament tradition is very different from that teaching. The saints who have passed, or the people who have passed and have become saints by canonization, can intercede, according to the Roman Catholic belief, on our behalf. New Testament differs a little bit. In Acts chapter 9, verses 13 and 14, we read, Then Ananias 
answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has authority from the priests to bind all who call upon their name. And we see that uh, Peter, as well as Paul, referring to the people who were living at the time, who were believers in God, referring to them as saints. In verse 32, it says, It came to pass, as Peter went to all parts of the country, that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Libya. Who were the saints who dwelt in Libya? They were the believers in Jesus Christ. They were referred to as saints. You remember the story where Peter was living in Leda, a place close to Joppa, who was a port in Israel? There was a lady by the name Tabitha who was very generous, who was taking care of the widows in the community. When she died, they sent for Peter. Peter came over and prayed for her. Verse 41, then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. So the people who were gathered there, who were believers in Jesus Christ, are being referred to as saints by Peter. And Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2 again refers to the believers as saints. And to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Here again, he is referring to the people who were baptized in the name of Jesus as saints. So the New Testament has a slightly different perspective on sainthood. According to the New Testament, all of us were sanctified by baptism and the anointment of the Holy Ghost are sanctified and we are saints. Sanctification is a biblical principle. It's a crucial Bible theme which, which is often neglected. And that's why our church is dedicated once a year, this day, as a day of sanctification. Sanctification is something that is mentioned in the Old Testament as well. In Leviticus chapter 11, 40, verse 44, it says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. And Peter quotes this verse in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, by saying, For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. And here he was quoting the Old Testament. So sanctification, being holy, is a biblical principle. Right from the time of the Old Testament, even today in the New Testament time. So the question is, how do we attain sanctification? Sanctification is achieved by a process. And again, I don't want to criticize other faiths or religions, but we need to know what we believe and why we believe it. In Romans chapter 8, verse 30, we read, And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. That's what we stand. Our sins are forgiven when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So we got Pabamojana. Our sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nidi, justification. Manasustada, healthy state of the mind. Then comes holiness. And that is sanctification. That's what uh, Paul talks about here in chapter 8, verse 30. Pablo Mojano, justification, healthy state of the mind, holiness. And that is the process by which we are sanctified. So what is the first step? First step. And what do we do for Papa Mojana? Papa Mojana the middle snap. Now, here again, let me make the distinction between us and some of the other Protestant groups. Lutheranism and Calvinism 
believe that once you're justified, meaning once you're baptized and your sins are washed away, you're sanctified. There's only one thing, nothing else. And we believe the same thing. So step one is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 3 verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water, and that water there, again, a matter that is being contested, born of water and the Spirit. Many believe that refers to water baptism. However, many scholars believe that that water there refers to the Word of God. In the same context as he talks with the woman at the well, if you had asked me, I would have given living water. So water here does not refer to water baptism, but to the Word of God. You listen to the Word of God, accept the Word of God, and that is your baptism. And what is baptism? The baptism that John the Baptist told us about. John the Baptist told us about repent and be baptized. Repentance, of course, is part of it, goes without saying. If you don't accept that you're a sinner, you have no reason to uh, get baptized. Like Jesus didn't have to be baptized, but he still did. So, baptism is the process by which we are, or we become, the part of the body of Christ. In Acts chapter 13, verse 31 we read, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. We again read that in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So belief in the Lord Jesus Christ by the word of Jesus Christ and baptism by the Holy Spirit. Because the one who came before Jesus told us that I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with fire and spirit. And that is the true baptism. That is the baptism that we need to end for. And that comes after we accept the word of God. So, once we are baptized, or sins are washed, and we become part of the body of Christ, and then we receive holiness. After we receive the baptism of the Spirit. Just like the disciples were filled with Spirit on the day of Pentecost. I baptize you with water for repentance. That is John speaking. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Malayalam translation is English translation is slightly different. Whose sandals are not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So baptism in the Spirit is the true baptism. The writer of Hebrews tells us, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and the faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms. Here, the word baptism is in the plural, because the writer of Hebrews knew very well that there were many teachings about baptism. Mm -hmm. And that's why we also say one God, one baptism. So what is that true baptism? That's the one that was proclaimed by John the Baptist, who came to prepare the way for Jesus. So what are the steps of sanctification? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, be baptized, but lay aside, don't quibble about how to be baptized, but be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And what happens? Now once we are baptized, we receive the Holy Spirit. So the question is, is baptism necessary for receiving the Holy Spirit? Well, there were people who received the Holy Spirit even before they got baptized. And who are they? Remember, when um, uh, Peter had his vision, and went to Cornelius' house, as he was preaching, they were filled with spirit. They were not baptized, but they were filled with spirit. So, listen to the word of God, be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
And once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And once the Holy Spirit dwells in us, is that the end of the story? That's where the Protestants and we differ a little bit. They believe that once you're done, you're done. But we believe that we have to maintain that sanctification for eventual glorification. We sanctify ourselves on a daily basis. Sanctification has to go on. If that is not the case, there would not have been reason for James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. There is persecution, but we have to persevere. Uh, we have to maintain our sanctification on a day-by-day -day basis and a moment-by-moment -moment basis. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you get the power. Once you're filled with the Spirit, you'll receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to witness Jesus to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we read, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So then we have to produce the fruits of the Spirit. If you love me, keep my commandments. So keeping the commandments is part of the, our sanctification process. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Now for the apostles, at least for 11 of them, Jesus was here with them. And he was there to pray for them. He was there to intercede for them. But he realized that he is leaving. That's why in that great intercessory prayer, chapter 17 uh, of John, he prays for the disciples. He intercedes on behalf of them while he was on earth. Not only on behalf of them, but on behalf of us as well. But now that he is not with us in the body, what he has done, he has promised us, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another counselor. That's the Holy Spirit. So there we go back to John chapter 17, verse 8. For I give them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Sanctify them by the truth. So everyone who accept that Jesus came from God receives sanctification by that prayer. But we have to maintain our sanctification by daily work. Faith without works is worthless. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but there is work ahead. Which is the work of sanctifying us on a daily basis? And that is this day, the first Sunday of our liturgical calendar is dedicated for the sanctification of the church, which is the families in the church, which is each and every one of us. So that is what Kudoshito is all about. Mojana, Nidi, Manasustada. Let us pray for these. And uh, if anyone here needs that mojana, if anyone here needs that justification, if anyone here needs that healthy state of mind, if anyone needs that holiness, this is the time. This is the time for each and every one of us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, be justified, and be sanctified. May the Lord help each and every one of us to be sanctified fully on this day that is dedicated for that purpose and beyond and forevermore.